I would have gone to hell and been shocked. Welcome to day 10 of Seek His Face 30 day challenge of ways to draw closer to God. And day 10 is all about sharing a personal testimony with a friend or a family. You can download a PDF if you follow the link. So I have decided, obviously I'm doing mine online. So all of y'all, my friends, I've decided to actually share my t salvation testimony, how I came to Christ or how he found me. And yeah, I hope someone gets something out of this. So my name is Vanessa. Hi. And I have been a Christian, born again Christian, in terms of my salvation, since 2010. But I had an encounter with God as well when, prior to that, when I was about 11 years old. One moment. So I grew up um, in a Ghanaian household. So church was just part of the culture. It wasn't even a religious thing. It's a cultural intertwined thing. I grew up going to church with my mum and family. Um, but when I turned about 15, 16, I left and I'm like, nah, it's not for me. But then my friend invited me to her church because she wanted to go see a guy that she was she liked. And I just decided to follow her. That's a story for another day. As we went to the church, I listened to the sermon and something in my spirit changed. And I was just like, no, I actually want to go start going to church. And I'm going to start coming to this particular church. So I started going to that church. And bit by bit, I was getting building a better relationship with God. I even enrolled into Bible college for a year when I was about 17 years old. But in between those times, I still did not have the revelation of what it meant to be a Christian. I just knew what it meant to go to church. So that's what I did. What I was doing Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, did not reflect what I was experiencing on Sunday. My life was not matching up. What people will call a hypocrite, that was me. And I can openly admit that I was a hypocrite. No one would have looked at my life and be like, I want to do what you're doing because there's a difference between... They would have literally said, okay, you're going to the rave, I'm going to the rave, I'll see you at the rave. And then I will go to... The difference maybe will be I will still get up and go to church on Sunday. So I did that for a couple of years. And in between that, I experienced so many traumas, experienced abuse, everything that happened. Most of it happened between the ages of about 14 to about 17, 18. So fast forward a couple of years, I'm currently at uni now and I'm raving it up, but I'm still finding the Christian societies to join. I'm, you know, seeing people, but I'm still finding the Christian societies to be a part of because I was religious. And being religious means you find what you're familiar with, being around quote unquote Christian people, but the same people you'd be still going raving with and no one would say anything. Anyway, so I decided in my second, going into my third year, rather than doing a work placement I decided to do a voluntary program so I went to India for 10 weeks to teach and while I was out there that's when I really realized that when they say there's a devil there's a devil when they say there's a god there's a god and there's a big difference and you need to decide which side you're going to be on and I wanted to be on God's side but I'm like God I don't know how to do it properly because every time I do try to serve you something just goes left someone else comes back into my life someone else invites me to this thing and before you know I spiral back down to where I was again so distant from you and I remember praying. I'm like, God, I actually want to surrender my life to you. I don't know how to go about it. I want to find a good church where I can serve you properly. Help me open doors for me. And God gave me a word and he said, you will start a new church. It will be a small church. You have to get involved and you have to work with women. Those were the words. And I wrote that in my journal that I had at the time. I come back to England now and I go back to my old church. My old church had maybe 500 people. So I knew that wasn't what maybe God had placed me for what he, the word he gave me. And as I sat in that service, God was just like, message someone I went to uni with and tell them you want to come to the church. So I'm like, that's very bizarre because in our relationship dynamic, I'm the Christian. I was the one wearing a purity ring. I'll link you, but I'm still wearing purity ring. <laughs> purity ring, you know. So I messaged this person and I'm like, oh, I would like to come to visit your church. And they said, oh, yeah, come. But they invited me to their conference. So when I went to their conference, there were about, I don't know, over a thousand people there. So I'm like, oh, this can't be it. This is not the small church God's called me to. So I asked them, I'm like, is this, this, is this your church? And they're like, no, this is our conference. Um, my church is in a certain area. And it was not that far from where I lived. I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm going to come and visit. I'm like, how many people, by the way, how many people are in your church? And he's like give or take 10 11 maybe here and there i'm like huh? what kind of church is that so the following sunday i go to that church i sit down and god was just like this is it and i'm like 
but half the people is a pastor in his family like there's nothing here he's running from the pa to change the song on his blackberry and come back and sing it there's no one playing there's literally nothing here but god was like this is it and from when god gave me that assurance i was like fine god whatever your will is let your will be done in my life i started coming church start coming church doing everything i was like the best christian girl in a new church I was involved. People were trying to follow me up. I'm telling them something. All of my doctrine that I'd gathered over the years from different places, all of that was just playing up. I will question everything, but I will be involved in everything. I went to people, random people's baptisms that I wasn't invited to. I was going Bible study, outreach, everything. I was there. So three, about two and a half, three months into going to church quite regularly, the devil started to condemn me, like condemn me saying things like, yeah, but Vanessa, you know you've done this. You've done this goody two shoes Christian girl thing. You do it for a couple of months and then you're back. And it's like being in a very toxic relationship with her. It's like an example of when you're in a toxic relationship with somebody and they're going to break up with you, but they know you'll come back. When things get hard, you're going to holler out my phone. You're going to call me. You know where to find me. And that's literally what the devil was doing to me. So I decided this time I want different. So I decided to speak to my pastor's wife. And when I spoke to her, she said... Why not get saved again? Then that means everything prior to this particular date is under the blood. The devil can't use what God has washed away against you unless you think what you've done prior holds value. That's when it made me realize I was quite a religiously prideful person. I was quite self-righteous because I went to Bible college, because I used to pray for people. You know, I used to pray, lead in prayer at my old church, all of these things that I used to do, but my life did not reflect the, 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 the gifting God had given me. So in coming to that revelation that I can't use my accolades to get me into heaven, but it's my relationship that I have with God is what gets me into heaven. After coming to that realization, that's when I was like, all right, God, I'm going to give you my life. I have to give you my life. And that's when I got saved. And this was in February 13th, 2011. I was coming to church regularly, inviting people to come to church, but I wasn't saved because I was religious and, and self-righteous. After getting saved, like God has been so, so good. God has been so good to me. Like I don't know what life would have looked like if I had not given my life to Christ. If God has not gi given me the privilege of getting saved. I thank God for my marriage. I thank God for my children, my family, my mindset, my mentality, my heart, even my skin. So I'm like, hey, I still look young, you know, for an old lady like myself. <laughs> I still look young because God has protected me from the, the, the difficulties of life that other people experience. Because I meet other people maybe I went to school with and I'm like, wow, you have aged. Hey, life has lifed you. But I've had that privilege of having a simple life that God has been so faithful to me. And I shared all of this to say that if you are in a place of, you know, you know the word of God, you know church, you know how it works, but you know within your heart that you don't have the assurance of heaven, get your heart right and find a good church to go to. And it will, it will cost you. Salvation is free, but living for God will cost you. It will cost you to change your mentality. It will cost you to change your lifestyle. It will cost you to change potentially your friends. It may cost you relationships. It may cost you your career if it's in a, in a field that does not align with the things of God. But know for sure and know for certain that you serve a God that will never leave nor forsake you. You serve a God who says, I am the I am. That was the study I was doing the day before. If you have that backing, you just know that even when life gets difficult, that you are not alone. I pray that my testimony blesses you. Please do ask any questions. Make sure to follow for when we do the next day. I can't remember what day we're on now, but we are doing the Seek His Face challenge. God bless you. Bye.